I like the fact that you talk about PDP pulling the strings at the center there, because I've seen a lot of people now say that since uh, the APC got into power in the center, mm -hmm. most, if not all, of the major tribunals have been really in favor of the APC. Do you think that's a trend that's, that, that's probably fueled by the fact that, okay, the center is a certain way, let's align or please them? Because I'm not trying to indict in the judiciary yeah, here in any yeah. way, but people are pointing out the fact that all of a sudden, all of the cases seem to be falling on the laps of the APC. No, not all of the cases. Delta did not fall in the laps of the APC, and um, uh, I think Akwaib, okay, Akwaib hasn't been decided. But there was another state that didn't fall. But, but there, there's always there's always going to be that factor of whether that the president or the federal government is is interfering with the judicial process. We are still going to continue having that process, but I don't think. That is the f that is a factor right now in the um, in, in the tribunal here. I mean, judge verdicts we've seen so far. I don't think uh, I would like to be proven wrong, but I don't think that the federal government is interfering in judicial processes at this time. Is, but my point wasn't necessarily about them interfering mm -hmm. directly. I mean, sometimes there's. We, Bo I mean, body language. Body language. We know <laughs> when the Lagos State governorship election was happening, there was this talk about, well, let's align with the center. Sometimes it's just mental. You know, yeah. the judiciary, or whoever is even making these rulings, or whatever it is. Okay, let's, you know, I mean, whoever pays the piper. I'm not trying to indict anybody here again. Let me no, be, I'm trying to be careful. The judicial here, arm of government is, is the separation of powers. Yes. It's a completely different arm so of government. So you think that argument doesn't hold I, I, don't, I don't think it holds water. I don't think, but it's a Nigerian thing to. To, to think that, I mean, there's always interference, but uh, I don't want to believe that it's happening. What does this then say about the INEC as well? Because, I mean, Professor Tahiru Jaga, the former chairman of the INEC, uh, was giving a lot of, well, he was praised a lot, you know, with the last elections. A lot of the decisions are starting to show that there were a lot of issues around the country, and it's not restricted to, there's been issues in the south, in the north, in the middle belt, you know. What does this say about INEC and what we actually thought happened in the last election? I think what it says about INEC is uh, it has to do with the fact that the permanent voters' cards uh, is still evolving. It's still an evolving process. And um, I, th I think uh, the card reader and the PVCs and all of that will made it very diff doubly difficult sometimes. I mean, when you work with technology, you expect hiccups. I don't think Nigeria has reached that point where we we'll depend wholesale on technology in our electoral processes. So I think that's part of the challenge uh, where, where you see um, the fact that some of the uh, cases have been overturned and all of that. The application of the PVCs, the electoral guidelines, the electoral act and all of that. The fact that the PVC isn't or as lawyers would love to say, it isn't even in the, cons I mean, in the electoral act or whatever it is. So um, I, I think trying to bring technology into our electoral process is the reason why we are uh, having some of the difficulties, so why we had some challenges in the last elections. And we'll continue to see that for a while. Until you think it's going to be better without the technology? I'm trying to understand what you're saying uh, now. No, no. What, what, what I'm trying to say is that it will take some time for us to come to grasp with technology. But when we do, our electoral system will be near perfect or to a certain So are you standard. happy with Kogi? With the electoral process now, besides the issues that turned out eventually? Yeah, from the reports from what we, you heard. Yeah, from the reports we heard. Uh, I, I want to think that it was a relatively free and fair process. And uh, the margin of victory wasn't, wasn't that much between the two candidates. Uh, I mean, if you look at the fact that it wasn't up to 50,000 votes or thereabout, I think uh, kudos to INEC for, for the Kogi elections. So I mean, we still saw images on social media of you know, inducement on election day and all of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's INEX duty, but <laughs> that's still happening. Yeah, yeah. That, that's and still, still around the yeah, corner. Yeah, that still happens. And it says a lot about our electoral process and the political parties. And if, I mean, people will work closely with the elections when we still have uh, voters being induced. I think it's a sad commentary on, on election day. Process. I mean, while on the queue. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I think it's a sad commentary on our elections that yeah. uh, at this point of our, our democracy, we may be pretty young, but at this point of our democracy, we shouldn't be seeing voters getting paid to vote. I mean, I mean, those kind of footages uh, speak badly of our country, and um, people who do that should, I mean, should be arrested or something or prosecuted because yeah. it's, it's it's wrong. I talked about bias and I just want to lead into that because I saw a debate that held as well um, with the four main candidates. I think in the states, of course, the two major ones from the APC and PDP were there, and they shook hands and all of that. And it was nice to see that gesture. Um, by them. But it's also one state that's become very interesting. A lot of decampings have happened across board. People moving from one party to the yeah. other, from the PDP to the APC and vice versa. You know, we don't know 
I mean, the, the, the person in power right now, of course, is from the PDP, but the APC is in the center, so there's that factor as well. And the APC yeah. candidate is the former governor, almost yeah. playing out what's happened in yeah. Kogi as well. What are your expectations in Bayosa? Uh, I, I expect to see a very interesting, a close contest as well. Um, I, 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 don't, I don't want to, like, I don't have a crystal ball, nobody does, but I, I expect a close race. And um, I want to believe that the people of Bayosa will make the right choice. Yeah, I think that's the debate. And, yeah, the debate and, that, and, yeah, and, and, and elect, their, elect their governor, the governor they want. So I, I would like to appeal to, to Bayosa um, indigenous at this point to make the right decisions for themselves. And like you said, some of these um, inducements we saw in Kogi, we, we shouldn't see that. And the Electoral uh, Commission should make sure that things like this do not recall or reoccur in uh, How much Bayosa. of a factor do you think former President Jonathan will be in this election? <sighs> that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a tough one, but he's a factor. Uh, he's, he's loved by his people, uh, and he's, he's, he still has some goodwill, I mean, for cons making that um, historic uh, phone call that considered defeat to, to Buhari. And I think uh, getting on the storm ground with, um, with Dixon yesterday, or as he has done in the past, is a, is a very good thing, and, and that's some good moral support. I think. I think it's good for the Dixon campaign that Jonathan is getting on the storm ground and campaigning for him. Yeah. Yeah. On a final note now, let's talk about the Senate. <laughs> they did give uh, the Minister of Petroleum <laughs> a two-week ultimatum to end Which of the, uh, the fuel scarcity. <laughs> I mean, we all know the Minister of Petroleum is President, President Buhari. Buhari. So basically, yeah. they're giving the President an ultimatum. And that was very interesting. I mean, he is the President, but yeah. he's decided to keep that portfolio to himself. So yeah. how do we separate these rules? Now, that's what it brings up for a lot of people. How do we, does he get summoned? Oh, to, well, he asked to... for it. I mean, <laughs> he, he, nobody, he, he asked for it. He kept the portfolio for himself. And when we're having challenges in the country, when we do not have petrol, I mean, we, we go to the petrol, petroleum minister. And so if he's summoned, so if, should, if, should if the Minister of Petroleum is someone, does, is it right for him to send the Minister of State if we want to see the Minister of Petroleum? No, no, but if the, if the Senate insists that it has to be the Minister of Petroleum, we want to see the Minister of Petroleum. And the Minister of Pet Petroleum at this point is President Muhammad Buhari. And he has to, I mean, he, he cannot say... I mean, but he's he the President as well. So how do you draw that line between dragging your president all over the place. Oh, the president <laughs> is the petroleum minister. He asked for it. So if he's someone, he should, he should accept that sometimes he has, he has um, official functions that will conflict with the, the someone and all of that. Then probably he can send the minister of state for petroleum. But if he's available and the Senate wants to see him, he should go and testify and, and, and tell Nigerians why we, we, are, we are waiting on queues and why we do not have petrol. Very important because, I mean, the queues keep going back and forth. I yeah. thought they were cleared yesterday. Today I came out again and there's queues all over the place. I'm and not the, sure. And the funny thing is that they are not selling in, in, in jerry cans. For a country... The most important... For a country that runs on generators yes. and you go to a filling station and they tell you they are not selling. So how do you want people to power their homes? You know, I, 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 bought, I bought in my car yesterday but I couldn't buy in the... In, in the kegs, and I haven't been able to power my... Maybe you my, sleep in your cars. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll consider that. You know. So these, these are some of the issues we, we, we have, which, I mean, I was listening to someone from the PPMC yesterday say they won't be selling jerry cans. But it doesn't, it doesn't make sense because, I mean, this is a country powered basically on generators. So, yeah. uh, I mean, when you make rulings like that, it, it, it's... It's, it's a thing like between trying to avoid selling to black, market, uh, black marketers uh, uh, and... Uh, then making Nigerians suffer. But at the same time, the black marketers are still getting the fuel anyway. <laughs> exactly. You know, so we, we, I, I envisage the situation. I think that at this point, uh, we shouldn't be having queues in our country. And it's quite, it's quite sad what we are passing through at this time. I mean, a lot of Nigerians have, a, have every right to be angry because this isn't the change that they voted for. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I, I just want fuel. So, <laughs> I don't know, Mr. President. <laughs> Hopefully the ultimatum shakes you up a bit <laughs> to act and make sure that things work out. Thank you very much, Judek. Well, thanks yeah. for being here today. Hopefully yeah, thank you. when next year here, we're talking about more interesting and happier things. Nice to, <laughs> to have been here. When we come back, we'll be talking about some interesting technology. You want to stick around for that.